for the anti-bullying write-in. And the, the idea behind this is that it's a, kind of like the sit-ins from the 1970s, and we wanted to bring students here to give us their stories about bullying and anti-bullying. Bullying is a topic that probably cuts across all of our lives in some way, so what we want to do is gather those stories anonymously and then record the stories and then we can use them as the narrative fabric for the anti-bullying campaign, which we've kind of dubbed, Who's Frank? And Frank is going to be a giant elephant. Um, the idea is that bullying is sometimes the elephant in the room. And so what you see here behind us is a bunch of students, faculty, um, high school students, university students coming together to give us their stories um, that we can then use as the narrative uh, background for the campaign. Just being able to discuss these things in an open forum or even just to be able to discuss them at all is really important. So the, even the notion of secrecy and anonymity, I think, is very important. People are able to talk about these things in a way that's completely frank, as the uh, event title kind of designates. So this is just our primary launch, so hopefully we'll be able to see a lot more in the future. Maybe next semester we can see this moving around communities, um, but definitely making sure it's a dialogue between high school students and cross-age groups. We want to really get the message out that it's about everyone. So that's why the write-up campaign is really important to us. We need to have people who have been bullied, of course, but those who've also been the bully and watched bullying happen. We want to show that it's not just a day, it's a way, and that's the slogan that we're using. Uh, it kind of speaks to everything. I mean, we have the one day in February where um, we have the speakers coming in and the big presentation at our school with the MRU people coming. and. We just want to show that it's going to progress throughout the years and we really want to get this initiative started. There's the bully, the bully, and those not so innocent bystanders. And you all have your big sheets with the bully circle, that trap of comradeship. I've been interested uh, for many, many years uh, in the difference between normal, natural, and necessary conflict and bullying. Uh, the mean and cruel behavior where kids get pleasure from somebody else's pain. She's not a bully. But she was right. It's about a frank discussion about uh, what often goes under the radar, whether it's in the digital world or uh, in your everyday passing in school. Um, being frank about it, talking about it, being open about it. See, I want your daughter to be the one to say, that's mean, that's cruel, and have the courage, and it takes courage. And it isn't just about being courageous, it's about doing that with heart, uh, that kindness. Uh, I don't want kids to be nice. I want them to be kind to others. And I tell young people, you don't have to like every kid here, but you must honor their humanity and treat them with the dignity and regard you'd want to be treated with. And I want your young boys, when their friends say, look at that kid over there, different skin color, religion, gender, physical or mental ability, the big five for hate crimes. What makes a hate crime different than any other crime? It's criminal bullying. Let's mess him up. I want your kid to be the one to say no. But if we haven't walked the talk and talked the walk, how do we expect them to? I think it's empowering for them if they understand that, uh, that, that if they want to speak out about it, then they can do so, whether it's here or in a, in, in a workplace situation. Bullying doesn't just stop once you graduate from high school. Uh, it may morph into something uh, more vicious, actually, on university campuses. And it's very important to me that we look at our younger people uh, to help break this cycle of violence. They can't do it alone, but we can also do it for them. It, we need collectively, as a community, uh, to break this cycle, this culture of mean. So how do you treat hired help? How do you treat somebody moving through the grocery store a little slower than you'd like them to? How do you treat the new neighbor who looks different, um, has different skin color, different uh, languages, their first language? You see, our children are watching. Hola, oh, tearing me apart from the inside out so I can see myself from the inside. 
I am no stranger to depression and suicidal thoughts. I have been bullied on and off for 12 years now. It started with small jabs at my intelligence, but soon became worse. People picked on me all the time. I grew up pushing people away. I would hide in the bathroom and I would leave the school in tears. I'll never forget in grade 9 when Daniel said he had chocolate on his arm and told me to lick it off, fatty. After that it was obvious that they spoke about me behind my back. The snickers, the laughs, everything I did was dumb. I had no friends and I didn't try. I was too busy avoiding people. I thought the pain I felt was normal and deserved. To this day, decades later, I still struggle with the belief that I deserve to be mocked or beaten up. From 